Hello there my friends, hope you all are having a fantastic day right now. In this video, we shall look at the conditional statements in Python. So, what are conditional statements? Conditional statements are those statements which are executed based on a condition. The condition in most cases is an expression which returns true or false. So, usually the condition is a comparison expression like something like 8 is less than 9 or it can also be a logical expression like 0 and 1 or something like that. So, they are just expressions that return true or false. Simple as that. So, why conditional statements? Why do we need them in the first place? So, the reason that we need conditional statements is because they help us in decision making which is very important in programming. So, let's get started on how conditional statements work in Python. So let's consider an example and, and learn how conditional statements work in Python along the way. So let us say we are given a task where we are to take a number from the user and check if the number is a positive number or a negative number. So the simplest way in which we can achieve this is by first comparing the number with zero that is, if the number is greater than 0, the number will be a positive number. And if the number is less than 0, then it will be a negative number. So, how do we achieve this in Python? That is what this whole video is going to be about. So, first, we are going to take the input from the user. And I'll be using the variable num to store the number. Enter any number. So the input will be in the form of a string. So I need to explicitly cast its type to int because we need an integer to compare it with zero. So yeah, we've got a num. And now we have to check if the number is greater than zero or it's less than zero. So I'll just write the code and then we'll look at how the code really works. So if num greater than zero, print num is positive so yeah that's it so this if is a keyword which is going to take a condition which is an expression and what if does is it checks if this condition returns true or it returns false let's say we give the num as 5 so is 5 greater than 0 Yes, 5 is greater than 0. And this if keyword now knows that this expression returns true. So since this expression returns true, the print statement is getting executed. And a point that we have got to note here is that this print statement right here is written in the scope of this if statement. What this basically means is that this print statement will get executed only if this condition returns true. So we can say that this if is synonymous to the if that we use in the English language. And yeah, I have to include the f here because this is formatted input, right? So yeah, let us run this code and check for answers. Enter any number, I'll be entering 5. And 5 is positive. That's the output that we want. Now what if I enter a negative number? Minus 5. Nothing is getting printed which means this print statement is not getting executed. So now we can be sure of the fact that this print statement has been written in the scope of this if statement. And you may be wondering what this white space is for. The reason we include this white space, which is also known as indentation in Python, is to let the interpreter know that this print statement has been written in the scope of this if statement. That is the function of the white space. And if you're from another language, then you could relate these white spaces to the curly braces that are used to specify the scope of some statements. And this right here is a part of the syntax and needs to be included. So that is how the if statement works. And we've not solved the whole problem. We also have to address the situation where the user inputs a negative number and we have to print that the number is negative. So for that, we have 
another keyword called the else keyword and it is always used along with the if statement you can't use this else statement separately so this else statement depends on the if statement and in the case where this expression returns false the statements that are written in the scope of the else statement are executed so else itself does not take any conditions the condition for the else statement is this same one and now we are just going to print that the number is negative because if the number is not greater than zero then it's not a positive number and if the number is not positive then it is negative so i hope this makes sense if num greater than zero print this positive else print this let us run the code and check for ourselves five five is positive now let's run it again and give a negative number minus one is negative so this should have been clear to you now now let us give a weird input let me give zero let's see what gets printed zero is negative this is an absurd statement zero is not negative and it is also not positive so we are not handling this case the special case in this code and to do that we have another alternative called the elif elif is short for else if so what elif does is it allows us to address another condition and in this case we have three conditions either the number is greater than zero or it is less than zero or the number can also be zero itself and zero is not greater than zero or it is not less than zero but it is only equal to zero so that is going to be our condition our second condition which we are handling using the elif keyword so num double equals zero and if you remember this this is the equality operator which is used to check if the number is equal to zero so in this case again we are going to print a message and this time we'll be printing the the number so this should make a lot of sense to you right now so if the number is greater than zero print positive else if the number is zero then just print zero if these two conditions are false then as a last resort go to else and execute the statement that is in the scope of else so if you run this it should be able to handle all three conditions perfectly phi it is positive and let me give zero zero is zero a really cool message and a negative number minus two is negative so we have successfully done the task that we were assigned now there are a few things that we need to understand about if elif and else statements so the first thing is that this group of statements right here are referred to as the else if ladder so an else if ladder always consists of an if statement and an elif statement this else statement right here is optional in case of an else if ladder and another thing that we need to understand is that we can use how many ever else if statements we want in between the if statement and the else statement so you could use 10 20 30 elif statements if you have those many conditions and the code will be perfectly fine but you are not supposed to use more than one else statement and what about if statements can you use more than one if statement the answer is yes but that kind of thing works very differently from the elif ladder so the way elif ladder works is by first executing this if statement and if and only if this statement returns false this elif statement is going to get executed and this expression is checked but if you use another if statement right here say another if statement if num greater than 50 or something like that then this if statement gets executed regardless of this statement being true or false what i'm trying to say is this elif statement depends on the if statement coming in front of it but when you're using successive if statements then they all are separate entities so that is one thing that we need to understand so now if you write some statements over here i'll just write a message saying 
num is a large positive number. So this is how the program flow would look. This if statement is going to get executed and then this is going to get executed no matter what. So these two are mandatory and this elif and this else are going to get executed if and only if this expression is false. So this is the else if ladder right here and this is not a part of that sadly. So if you execute this enter any number I'll give the number 85. So you should see two messages getting printed to the screen because both the if statements are going to return true. So the number is greater than 0 and it's greater than 52. So 85 is positive and 85 is a large positive number and that is how you can use multiple if statements in a single program. So assuming that we understood this, let us move on to a really important concept called nesting. So what do we mean by nesting? So nesting in computer science refers to a situation where an object contains a similar object or you could say something which is contained by itself. And in this case, we are talking about an if statement written inside an if statement. So as you can see right here, this if statement is written in the scope of this if statement. So when this condition is true, then this if statement is also going to get executed. That is how simple it is. It's just an if statement inside another if statement. And you could go on. You could write any number of if statements in the scope of this if statement and if statements inside those if statements inside those if statements and so on. You could go on till infinity. So not infinity because your computer will break down if you do that. So yeah, let's get to the point. Now let's say we have another task where we have to identify whether a number is an even number or an odd number if the number is positive. So we are going to check that only if the number is positive. That is the main reason why we have written this if statement inside this if statement because this is what checks for positivity. So yep, we can now check for the condition for evenness of a number. So num mod 2 equals equals 0. So what does this mean? This condition checks if the reminder when the number is divided by 2 is 0 because if you see if you divide 4 by 2 you will get the reminder as 0 which means the number is divisible by 2 and what does that imply? That just implies that the number is an even number. So this is all really basic math. So we are just going to be printing that the number is an even positive number. So that's how simple it is. And if this condition is false, which means the remainder is not 0 when the number is divided by 2, then we'll be printing that the number is an odd positive number. So in this case, we'll be using an else. So print number is an odd positive number. So this should clear a lot of concepts to you, like indentation, for example. You can see there are two levels of indentation right here, which means to say this statement is in the scope of this if statement, which in turn is under the scope of this if statement. So this should really make a lot of sense right now. And let's quickly run this. So we'll enter a positive number like say 10 for example. You should see that 10 is positive and 10 is an even positive number. So the interpreter checked if this condition returned true and it indeed returned true. So this statement was executed and that's how we got this 10 is an even positive number. And if you give an odd positive number as input and this message will be printed to the screen. But we still have a case which we haven't addressed. So if you know elementary math, you should be aware of the fact that even 0 is an even number 
So we should also include a print statement here saying number is even. So task accomplished, mission passed. We have looked at how the conditional statements work in Python and how these three keywords if, elif and else work and the concept of the else if ladder. So that's it for this video guys. Hope you were able to learn something from this video and I'll end the video here. Bye for now and I'll see you guys in the next video.